when you look at the New Catholic Catechism, and when you look at the teachings of ancient Babylon, they are one and the same. Is the Pope Catholic? Huh. I don't believe so. And yet, if the Catholic Church was founded on the foundation, not of Peter, but of Babylonianism, then the Pope is Babylonian. Well, there's so much more we could talk about today. You might want to get this book and read it. Crossing the Threshold of Hope. It's actually by, it's the words of John Paul II. You will be amazed when you read, for example, beginning in pages 77 and continuing, how the Pope says that all religions on the face of the earth are all seeds of the Word of God. Is that true? Could it be that the false religions, Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, Sikhism, and all the others, Wicca, witchcraft, are all seeds of the Word of God? The Bible says something totally different. The Pope says this. The Bible, well, you know what it says. Jesus is the only way. What does this great Word of God say about the other religions? Let me read to you just a little bit of what the Bible says. I want to read to you from 1 John chapter 2, verses 22 and 23. It asks this question, Who is a liar? But he who denieth that Jesus is the Christ. This is Antichrist who denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. My friends, these heathen religions, if they deny Jesus Christ, they do not have the Father either. They have neither the Father nor the Son. And they are liars and they are of the Antichrist. That's what this great Bible has to say. Let me read to you a little bit more here. This is from Exodus chapter 20, verses 4 and 5. As far as these false idols and these false gods, it says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. The Pope bowing down before uh, an idol worshiper like this Buddhist monk. That's wrong. It says in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 7, Thou shalt have none other gods before me. That's, that's one of the Ten Commandments. And yet the Pope says that all are of the seed of the Word of God. He says all have the rays of the great sun. Oh, a little sun god, Babylonianism, in there as well. Now we only have about three or four minutes left. I want you to go with me on a very quick tour. And you will see the Pope and what he has done. He has taken the mark of Shiva in his forehead. He has participated in African tribal worship, voodoo worship. This Pope has affirmed Hinduism, Buddhism, and every other false religion. And now we're going to go on a little travel log with the Pope, and you'll see exactly what I mean. Then I'm going to come back to make some final concluding remarks. It was at Assisi, Italy in 1986 that the Pope held a great peace meeting of all the world's religions. They used the facilities of the Catholic Church for their rituals. Of course, we have already talked about the Dalai Lama of Tibetan Buddhism that put a, an actual Buddhist statue on the altar at the Basilica there in Assisi, Italy. There were the Japanese Shintoists, the Korean animists, and every religion on earth was there. And the Pope told them all that they all worshipped the same true God, just in different ways. The Pope, of course, has been to Calcutta and Delhi, India. It was there in India that the Pope went to the, uh, the, the site where the ashes of Mahatma Gandhi are buried. He took off his shoes, he placed a garland of flowers, and he commented on what a great man of God this Hindu guru, Mahatma Gandhi, was. Yes, it was also there that the Pope stated that India had an enormous amount to offer the world. He said, quote, what it offers is a noble vision of man, pilgrim of the absolute, on his way looking for the face of God. He said, in fact, and I'm quoting the Pope directly, in fact, the greatest contribution of India to the world can be this offering of a spiritual vision of man. Friends, when you look at their worship of Kali, the, 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 the 
cobra snake goddess, the horrible caste system of India through their false gods, millions of Hindu deities, for the Pope to say that the greatest contribution of India was their spiritual vision? Absolutely, absolutely amazing. Then, of course, he went on from Calcutta, Delhi, India, and Madras, India, where throngs cheered for him. He went to Bangkok, Thailand, and there he actually bowed to the head of the Buddhist faith. He met him there in one of the pagan temples along with the king of Thailand. Pope bowing to a Buddhist. He went from there to Fiji. He went to New Zealand. He participated in pagan ceremonies. To Morocco he went to be met by King Hassan, and the Muslims cheered him. He went from there back to Rome where he met on the banks of the Tiber River with a chief rabbi of Rome. And there he told the Jews that they need not repent of their sin of rejecting Christ Jesus. Those are, in essence, his words. I have all of the documentation. Of course, he went to Norway. He's been to Iceland, to Sweden, meeting with the Protestants. He's met with the Archbishop of Canterbury, the head of the Church of England, Runcie. And so I ask again, is the Pope Catholic? My friends, what you have seen in this video today has great meaning and significance because it tells us that these are the last days and the great apostasy, the great falling away has come upon this earth. It is our task, it is our duty to witness to lost Catholics. Yes, they are lost. But we need to witness also to the so-called evangelicals and the, the Protestants, the ex-Protestants, you might say, who are going into unity with the Pope of Rome. And I have two great verses of Scripture I want to leave you with. These are so, so profound. Please, my friends, as you see these on the screen, take these into your heart. First of all, we have the Apostle Paul speaking, 1 Timothy 2, chapter, uh, verse 5. He said, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, not Buddha, not Mohammed, not Shiva, not Kali, Jesus Christ. And then we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, and chapter 13, verse 15, these inspirational words. You see, Paul worried that the serpent, as he beguiled Eve, would beguile men and women. And he warned about false teachers. He said, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is a no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to the work. My friends, the devil is an angel of light, and his ministers appear to be themselves angels of light. But there is only one light of this world, and his name is Jesus Christ. Is the Pope Catholic? No. And yes, if we look back to the roots of Catholicism. But is the Pope Christian? Absolutely not. And let us pray that he will also accept Jesus. Thank you so much, my friends. Until next time, this is Tex Mars. May God richly bless you. Amen.